In this quick tip, I'll be going through how to serialize or link tasks together so that you get uh, a story arc running through your missions where the players have to complete one task, then they receive the next task, the next one, and so forth until the mission is complete. Uh, I call this serializing um, in contrast to parallel uh, tasks, which I'll be discussing uh, in the next one, next episode. So I've already set up this task um, where we have a task that spawns, uh, once the mission spawns, uh, it tells the player to run over here, and then when the player arrives here, it uh, uh, this task succeeds. So what I want to do the player to do next now is to kill this op4 operative over here named Hassan. So to, to change it around a little bit logically, I'm going to start with the end. So I'm going to put down a trigger first, and I'm going to call this task to succeeded. And this condition will be not alive Hassan. So that's how simply you do that. If you have named a unit that you want dead, you just put uh, exclamation mark alive, which means not alive, and then Hassan, in case you didn't know that. Then this trigger has to trigger a set task states module to switch uh, states to succeeded. And then I need to create the actual task. So this is then task two. I'll assign it to all playable units. The title will simply be kill Hassan. I'll use destination module position just to see how that works. I'll remember to switch it to assigned directly so it actually shows up to all the playable units. And for Francis, I'm just going to switch the task type icon here to, uh, to attack. So this should work. And synchronize it to this. And remember to now move the module position so because now the destination marker is going to be right over this module uh, um, icon. So I'm moving it just next to Hassan here so that the um, destination will show up correctly. Okay, so now we just need to figure out how to make this task assign itself to the players after this task has succeeded. And to do that, it's quite simple. I'll put down a trigger, synchronize that one to uh, the create task module. I'll open that one up and I'll call this task to assigned. And in the condition field, I'm going to do a trigger activated command. So this will uh, ask if an other trigger has actually activated or not. And since I, since I remember uh, what my uh, triggers are called because I named them correctly, uh, I'll ask if task one successful trigger has been activated. And then I'm going to add in a six second delay for reasons I will show you. So this trigger is now waiting for the task one to succeed. It will then wait another six seconds and then it will trigger task two to assign itself to all playable units. Let's just pop in and see how that works. Now. The reason why I put in a delay uh, in the task to assigned uh, trigger is if not the uh, task one succeeded and the task to assigned notification will overwrite each other on top of the screen. screen sorry. So here we have the first task assigned, move to the garbage pile, which we did last episode. Once that is completed, we get the notification for task complete and then we get task assigned. If I didn't put in that delay between the two triggers, uh, it would be horrible. The two would arrive at the same time and the sound would overwrite and the, the image would overwrite as well. So let's see if we can do something about this alive status of this Hassan dude. Good old 7.62 NATO, never fails. So there we have it, that's two tasks linked. Now I'm just going to pop back right in and uh, and uh, and make a third one just uh, so we get a bit more 
uh, into the logic of it. Um, and I am going to do it the other way around again this time. So I'm going to start with the assigned trigger. So this is going to be task three assigned. And the condition for this is trigger activated task, oops, that was caps lock. Task two, yeah, succeeded. So task three will assign as soon as task two is succeeded or at least after I've put down my six second countdown or delay if you like. So that should then spawn a new task, which would will assign to all playable units. We'll call it task three. We'll call it get in the hammer. We'll remember to switch it to assigned. We'll use synchronized object for destination and we can have a funny car icon for the, uh, for the icon if you're into that kind of thing. So just remember ownership, very important. Switching state to assigned right away, very important. Being aware of the uh, destination, very important. So we'll sync these together. I'll sync this one to the car to make the destination marker pop up. Then we need the set task state. And make that succeed. And then we actually need to make the trigger that will tell the set task state that the player has actually succeeded in getting into the vehicle. And there are a few ways to do that. Uh, we'll do the really simple one now. I know that this player is called P1 and I want him to be in car one. And this one is of course task three successful. Okay. So you can continue building these like Legos through your, uh, through your missions, having tasks, follow tasks, uh, and ending up in the final task that completes the mission, for example. Um, once you get into the logic of it and how the triggers work and how the triggers need to activate each, other's, each other, it's, it's, uh, it's really not difficult. You just need to be concentrated and, and make sure that you, you keep your names in order and everything. So again, the task complete notification pops up and the assign pops up right in after it with a six second delay. Hassan is dead, so another six seconds should go by and we should be assigned the new task. And now as soon as the player named P1 enters the vehicle called Car1, the final task should be complete. <laughs> 